Well, folks, WWE mm. ran another PLE. Bad blood mm. happened a couple of weeks ago. I was a little confused because I didn't realize it started when it did. When did it start? It started like six o'clock. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I didn't realize that there was a UFC event happening right after. Okay. So they were kind of jockeying for a position. And so they sure. bumped WWE up, which I was like, you know what, though? I like this early, earlier time slot. Yeah. We talked about this during WrestleMania. Well, we're getting older. We're That's getting older. Yeah. But also, by the time the event was over, I looked at the clock. I'm like, it's nine. You, you said and, of course, I, and of course, I'm, I'm central time. There's still a whole Saturday night ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Overall, from what you saw, how would you rate the event? Okay, so it was it was mostly a nothing happening show, yes. minus the the opening match, mm -hmm. the Hell in a Cell match, which was um, it's interesting to me because Ooh. what I thought it was fantastic. I'm not okay. gonna not gonna shit on the match okay. at all. Uh, the only thing I will shit on is that horrific bump, poor <laughs> Drew McIntyre took. I think he undershot that. Yeah, I think he thought he was going to overshoot it. Uh -huh. And I also think he thought he was going to slip on the fucking beads yeah. that were all over. So he was trying to get make sure that his footing was sure. Yeah. And he didn't want to overshoot it. But did he undershoot it? And damn it. Fuck me. Hell of a bump. Hell of a bump. But other other than the, the hard way toolbox shot to the head, which probably sucked. Mm -hmm. Like the rest of it seemed all right, but it's like one of those things of like the match was great, but it was also like I've seen better matches, but it was on a show where fucking nothing else was happening, right? And some matches were not good, uh, and we'll get and, to that. So, and so like it elevated it even more, even though it didn't yeah. needed it. I think like people like I've heard people saying like it's like one of the best Hell in a Cells ever, and I was like, well, mm. hold on, let's let's slow, okay, let's slow down a little bit, guys. Okay. Let's, let's, okay. let's chill out, but but very good, okay, very good. Your thoughts? I think it was a solid B show. I thought the Hell in a Cell and the main event were solid to great. Everything else was weird. Everything else was weird. Everything else was weird. The, yeah. There was like a weird pacing to the show. It was a weird pacing. And it also felt like it was like one of those shows where beforehand everyone was like, we're going to try some. Shit. And and too many people tried some. Shit and it didn't work. Just to run through the card. Mm. Just for reference. Okay. You had CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Hell in a Cell. That kicked things off. Mm hmm. And he had Nia Jax versus Bailey, uh, women's WWE championship match. Mm -hmm. He had Damian Priest versus Finn Balor. He had Rhea Ripley versus Liv Morgan, WWE women's world championship match. And then you had Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns versus the Bloodline, which right. was Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu. Nia Jax and Bailey, Damian Priest and Finn Balor, they, they were fine. They were it, fine. It, it was fine. They didn't do anything for me. The most notable thing was. In Hurricane Rana spot in the in the Bailey Nia Jax match that was like oh, I don't even remember that. Well, well, so Bailey tried a power bomb and Nia tried a Hurricane Rana. That was her falling and Bailey having to take the flip herself to I... the and 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 Corey Graves for the love of God <laughs> said, "I'd like to see an, a replay of that." And they showed one and oh, it looked worse on the replay than it did live. And even he was just like, I don't know what happened. I must have been looking at my phone at that point. It was the horrible. Only, the only thing that stood out to me in that match was the Tiffany Stratton angle, mm -hmm. which they've been playing up for like a month now it is like the will she won't she cash in on mm -hmm. Naya, which eventually I feel like she will. Of course. Uh, but overall, it, it was fine. Uh, it was right, yeah. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, the match overall was fine. It was fine. Storyline wise, it sucked mm. because you kind of expected that like bitter hatred feud of like Finn screwing over Damian and causing him to lose the title to Gunther. Like there would be more heat there. There wasn't. 
it, it was it was a good match for Monday Night Raw. Yeah, it was like a Raw main event. A good it was like raw a Raw main, main event. event. Yeah. Okay. Solid match. It was fine. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. Uh, Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan. <sighs> I don't know who fucked up. But somebody fucked up. My theory, this is a theory, mm. somewhere between the referee and Raquel Rodriguez. And the thing is, like, they've made their refs look really stupid lately. Well, okay, so here's the thing, though. It was the same ref mm. during the Randy Orton Gunther debacle. Right. At Jewel. Are they trying to Nick Patrick him? I don't know if there's like there's some conspiracy theory going on right now with that referee and like they're positioning him to be like, hey, this could get kind of screwy. Like, yeah. let's put him in there and see if anybody notices. I love this. Like this need if this is not in their booking, if this is not in the notebook, it needs to be. It needs to be. It needs to be. Like this guy. It's the same rep because when it happened. So, okay. So we're bearing the lead here. Um, towards the end of the Rhea Ripley, mm-hmm. Liv Morgan match, Rhea's on the outside, whacking Dom with the kendo stick. Mm-hmm. The referee comes out. And as the referee comes out of the ring to go get Rhea, Raquel Rodriguez comes in and blasts Rhea from behind. Mm-hmm. Right in front of the ref. Which he has ref- to pretend not to see. Which, yeah, he has to now pretend not to see. Goes back towards the ring. And at that point, it's like, well, you can't not call it. Because everybody just saw you seeing what happened. Yeah. And then they call for the bell. Raquel goes in. She almost fucking powerbombed Rhea on top of Liv. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that. Yeah. So I'm like, something happened here. I don't know yeah. what, but like somebody screwed up somewhere. I don't know if the ref was out of position, if mm-hmm. Raquel waited too long, mm-hmm. or she came in too early. Because I almost feel like the angle that or the spot that was supposed to happen was the ref was supposed to come out, push Rhea to go back into the ring, mm-hmm. or go back towards the ring, help with the staff to get Dom unhooked. Raquel comes out and shots Rhea from behind, throws her in the ring, power bombs her, puts Liv on top, ref turns around, runs in the ring, one, two, three. But how is there not an agent with her? With Raquel? Yeah. To tell her to go, to go, 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 go. Like, like there needs, there, there should be an agent. It's stagehands. It, it, it's those people. Somebody's um, got a headset. Somebody's got a headset. Somebody's got to be telling her what to do, which is why, like, I'm confused. I'm a, that's why, like, I'm a little confused as to like who's to blame for that debacle. Mm-hmm. Because they literally go to the same point at the same time. Somebody's timing was off, and but I mean the rep, but, the, but, the rep's but, got an earpiece. You're also burying another lead as well. Oh, can we talk about the performance? of one Dominic Mysterio in this match. I wanted to get there because once again, folks, Dominic Mysterio has proven Mm -hmm. why he is a first ballot hall of fame, hall of famer. The man is a legend, not a legend in the making, Mm -mm. a legend today, a legend tomorrow and a legend forever. This is a guy who has played his part perfectly to a T to a T. I nearly crapped my pants when he fell out of that cage. Like I knew something was going to happen. I knew that there was going to be something where he gets out of the cage. Listen, it's a shark cage. It's Dominic Mysterio. There's going to be shenanigans. He's going to find a way to weasel his way out. And when he got the door open, like, I didn't know if he was going to try to like, just hang off it and drop. But when he fucking took that forward bump, out of the cage bro i clenched (laughs) and then to see him just fucking hanging there by his foot Mm -hmm. he is doing it for the people and and as terry funk Mm -hmm. the man himself Mm -hmm. once said to you and i he said you you have to be careful in this business because i could hog tie you and hang you upside down yep just a foot off the floor Mm-hmm. And if I drop you on your neck, you it could break it and you could be dead. Break it and you could be dead. That's what Terry Funk told us in a bar in Utica, New York. Yeah. And we said, Terry, what? why are you telling us this? Like, I don't understand. He's just letting us know. He is letting us know. He's, he's letting a man know. 
R.I.P. Legend. Yeah. He could kill you if you wanted. <laughs> I believe him. I believe him. So Dominic Mysterio risking life and limb. Risking life and limb to put mm -hmm. on a hell of a show. I thought the match was solid again, like solid up until that point. It got screwy. I think it lost its heat, which I think is the biggest issue. I feel like the biggest crime of the whole thing is that the only reason they used the referee cam mm -hmm. was to get that line of dialogue over. Yes. And it was a stupid line of dialogue. It made no sense. It made no sense. And I fucking hated it. And 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 the refer eye cam deserves better. The the refer eye cam does deserve better. It deserves better because it's a hell of a concept. We have GoPros now. But also, consider this. Mm. Who did they put the refer eye cam on? That's right. The referee who has been involved with some of the most recent fuck ups in WWE referee history. Can I can I can I can I book an angle? Book an angle. Can I book an angle? We find out he forgot he's still wearing the referee cam. And he goes to the back and he's doing a shady deal. <gasps> and the referee cam catches it. And then you realize, dude, I don't know who he's working for, but like, you know, you book, book, book a better it, Akeem, the African dream. I don't know. <laughs> you like something. I don't... You know what, though? That would be pretty fun. Let's end with Hell in a Cell. Sure. Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns versus the Bloodline. Overall, yeah. fine. Yeah, it was fine. I think I think the match did what it needed to do without being too over the top. I think the most important thing for the match was to, number one, get Cody Rhodes away mm -hmm. from the bloodline. And it positioned Roman to now feud with the bloodline. Right. It brought Jimmy back, brought the rock back in. I'm happy to see Cody being done with them. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm happy to see bloodline feuding with bloodline. That's that's what needs to be happening. The angle they did after the show with Kevin Owens, mm. I thought was phenomenal. It's wonderful. I thought it was great because I I wasn't expecting it to happen. Mm. And I'm just scrolling through the Twitter sphere, seeing what some reactions are, seeing what any news is, and I catch that video and I'm like, God damn, Kevin Owens beat the shit out of Cody Rhodes like he owed him money. Which he probably did. Which he probably did. It was a good beatdown. It, it was well a done. Good beatdown. It was I it believed was... that. I was like, Cody fucked uh, like Cody got Kevin to invest in some deal. And then it just went south. Yeah, you tried to get the like the, the earwax cleaner, but really it just pushes the wax further into your ear and you exactly. lose all your money. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know? That, I'm sure that's what Cody. Yeah, was totally. Talking. So I thought that was great. That match did what it needed to do. It, it, it split people up. It started a new feud. The thing is, like, Solo Soko is not a top guy. He's not a top guy. He is the, the main villain in a 90s car heist movie. Okay. <laughs> and you're like, I don't buy for a second that this guy owns a, a stolen car ring. Like, he's a decent looking enough guy to be an actor in Hollywood that someone owed a favor to. But you know what, though? I think that works for the situation. I mean, it does. You have this, and, and you know, no pun intended, but you have this fresh blood. Mm. coming in and basically taking over a position that had been held for so long you need again this goes back to what i was saying i think a couple of weeks ago where you need better heels you yeah. and, and you need better heels because you need people that the fans can truly hate and i think that's what you have with solo sokoa it, it is somebody who fans can look at and say he doesn't deserve the position that he is in. Therefore, we don't appreciate the position that he's in. And we do not want him in the position that he is in. And that's only going to give more love and admiration to Roman Reigns, mm -hmm. and whoever he brings back into the fold, but, you know, with Jimmy and then whomever else they end up getting. I, I, I kind of hope they don't bring Jay back into the fold on this. Because I think he's doing very well off on his own. He is. He, is, but I think it's inevitable. That I think uh, it is inevitable. I would like to see them go in a different direction. I would love to see them do an angle, much like the lie detector test with Mister America and Mister McMahon. 
I would love to see them do an angle where everybody has to uh, has to submit a a, a a 23andMe. Okay. For a DNA test, and we'll yeah. see who really is in the bloodline. <sighs> and and thusly, and thusly, you, you then you start doing your bloodline black and white. Your bloodline oh, red and black. Bloodline red and black. Yeah, and then you can you can split it off that way. They're going to do war games totally. And then I think eventually everything is going to build to mania. Hopefully, hopefully. I thought that match was fine. I'm glad that match did what it needed to do. Oh, before we get to Hell in a Cell, before okay. we get to Hell in a Cell, can we talk about the Saudi belt? I'm so happy you brought that up because I blocked that out of my mind. <laughs> I blocked that out of my memory. Let's talk about that whole segment. It was wild. First of all, there was the tease, I think, at the opening of the show. With Triple H is going to be coming out and making a huge, huge announcement. announcement. Huge announcement. I, I think Cody was talking it up on Pat McAfee's show where he was like, there's going to be something announced at Bad Blood that is going to be huge. It's going to carry us to Mania. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. And then Trips comes out, does the whole, you know, this is the this is the attendance. Thank you so much for being here. Yada yada yada. Ra ra ra. We're all doing well. I'm like, yeah, you know, okay, yeah. great, great, great. What's this announcement? And then he starts talking about Saudi Arabia, and I'm like, ooh, shit. Ooh. And the crowd shits on it. Oh, flip. Brother, I don't know how much longer. Mm. They can go with the Saudi Arabia deal. The, th the thing is, they had the out. They had the out. When the merger happened, that was the out. I think from a financial position, they're making too much money on the deal mm. to say no. I think from the, the fan perspective, though, it is people it's are not, not happy. It's not great. People are not happy. So they do the whole thing about how they're going to crown a crown the jewel men's and women's champion and they showed off this belt and folks if you've been following this show you know that i have some opinions on wrestling title belts this title belt mm. is quite possibly the ugliest fucking mm. belt i have ever seen in my life and i've seen a lot of belts i've seen a lot of belts up close i've held a lot of them too you know big deal. He, he's not a stranger. i was okay uh, yeah um i i have i have a strong opinion mm. on the big gold yeah yes you do this belt um, is 10 degrees below the big gold we're gonna we're gonna it put is. this on the screen. It is it is, folks. Like I've never seen anything like it. I don't even know that like gaudy does 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 it justice. I saw this and there I just, out loud. Yep, out loud. I went. That is a gaudy piece of shit. That's worse than the AEW title. It, it's it's almost the same shape too. And when I say it's worse than the AEW title, I rank the AEW title below the big gold. It's pretty bad. What's with the chandelier on the side? I like it's a fucking horrible looking belt. It's just gold with green. And then like, what do you do? Can't with it? read it. But but the point being, like, okay, so it's gonna be champion versus champion. The winner gets that belt. Yes. And then what? Uh, br bragging rights. Thing is, like, there's no means to an end. I think what's gonna happen. Gunther is going to beat Cody. Okay. Whether straight up or whether the fucking schmaz Kevin Owens comes in and, and costs him the title. And I think that is going to start the story building into WrestleMania 41. I, the, 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 the women's title, I don't fucking know what they're, I mean, the, the Tiffany Stratton might come out and, and, and cash you might get something. Point. Yeah. You might get something the, the, they're not going to be able to wear what they want to wear. Cause you know, the, the Black Under Armour's for everybody. Black Armour's for anybody. It's real unfortunate. I don't know. The title looks like shit. It's the show's going to be the show. Is what it is. Not much All right. about that. Now we can talk about Hell in Cell. The main event. <laughs> the opening Which, contest. You know what? That, I think they had to put this as the opener. Because if oh, yeah. this at the main event, I, I, I think the crowd would have been real burned out. Well, you can't put the rock on first. I thought this was everything that it needed to be. 
Yes, I agree. I would put this as one of the best mm. Hell in a Cell matches. Really? I would go so far to say that. Now, you said not the best. I said, hold on. Let's. Oh, oh, you said you, you said. I, I think I think people were jumping, saying it's one of the best. But like, I would I would definitely say top five, mm-hmm. possibly top three. I would say top three for me personally. I don't know that you can beat the original. Taker and Sean. Taker and Sean. Taker and Sean. Okay. As far as the match itself, it's damn near perfect. Okay. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. You have the debut of a major character yeah. during the match who will mm-hmm. go on to win championships and then, you know, fuck rights and in, in the yeah. state as a governor. Yep. But digress it is one of the most important matches in wrestling history period. And it's okay. amazing. So like, okay. I don't think it really can be topped just because of the significance sure. of it. And then, of course, like you have the Foley thing, which is more of a spectacle than a match. The match itself is not great. I would not put Taker Mankind top five. Really? I think it's an important moment in wrestling history. I I think it was something to salvage what could have been an amazing match. Sure. Because one of my favorite feuds in wrestling is Undertaker Mankind. It's wonderful. I thought the, the... from a character standpoint, from mm-hmm. just a fun story standpoint, and even from a match standpoint, like, like those are two guys that I always thought worked well together. Mm-hmm. Um, and that could have been a tremendous match. But what, we didn't get that. No. We got Foley getting thrown off the cage, and we got Foley getting thrown through the cage. I think Sean and Taker, definitely top three. I think even like Taker trips was a good one. Yeah. There's a lot of other ones that you can give credit to. None, none of the red cage shit. No. Like, if it exists within a red Hell in a Cell, no. That, fuck Seth off. Seth Rollins and the Fiend. Drew and Punk, I think, the reason why I would put it up there mm. is because I looked at this as one of the first true blow-off matches Mm. that we've had in quite some time. Yeah. This is a match that was pure carnage, had great great storytelling, Mm -hmm. had great spots, great Mm -hmm. moments. Not a perfect match. There were a couple spots where I was like, that's, yeah, you know, Drew going, oh, he's coming off the top rope. Ah!" And taking Mm -hmm. a double axe handle. I was glad to see that they allowed them to get some color. Even if one was on accident. Was it though? Was it really on accident? Mm. Was it on accident or was it a little bit more than? Uh, uh, you, you, you think they're faking them staples again? Oh, brother, they ain't faking them staples. I think I think that there were a couple of times where they definitely potatoed each other. Oh, sure. Uh, because I I think Punk got a little loosey goosey with that uh table piece. See, I, I I think that's where some of the issue happened because it looked like oh. he fucking scraped the fuck out of his dome with, uh with the table legs when he went to like yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah i think that's maybe where it started but no i mean i thought the match was great overall i thought for the blood feud that they had been having over a fucking bracelet mm-hmm. um it ended the way that it needed to end i think that it was by far top 10 match for both people Oh, sure. Yeah, in, their, yeah, yeah. in their entire careers. Yep. I think that this is a match where that people will look back on and say, yes, like when it comes to Hell in a Cell, that is a true Hell in a Cell match. It's like the first motherfucking one where they didn't escape the cage. They didn't escape. When it comes to Hell in a Cell, you kind of understand it as like it's going to be one of two things. What happens in the cell is going to be so chaotic and so barbaric, it has to stay within a cell. Mm-hmm. Or it's going to spill out, and there's going to be chaos around, chaos on top. There have been some Hell in a Cell matches where nothing fucking happens. Yep. There's barely any weapons, barely any escapes. It's just a match inside of a cell. I think the match was exactly what it needed to be for the style of match that it was. I think it was exactly the match that it needed to be for the feud that it was. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yeah, it was definitely the match of the night. It was yeah. definitely the most interesting thing that happened on the show. Overall, that's the only thing people will remember this show for. Yeah. 
in in the history of the show. They're doing a good job building the bloodline stuff. The crown jewel thing is unnecessary and yeah. complicates things that don't need to be complicated. I wouldn't do it because I don't know what the fuck you do with that belt. Yeah. And does like like next year when they go back, does the winner have to defend it or is there a new belt or like what the fuck happens? I, I'm going to say it's going to be a yearly winner. So it's going to be a new gaudy belt every year. That's that's my opinion. That that That's what I think is going to happen. Well, God bless that they're keeping the belt designers in business, you know, I like, mean, yeah, I make a living, I guess. Absolutely. 